Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Team Engineered Podcast. After a brief break for, away from me and leaving me to run a solo session, Jade is in the house, so to speak, with us, although you are still in the midst of floods and rework and all that sort of stuff, so it has been a bit of a <sighs> to take some time out today. Yes. I said to, <laughs> I've got the amazing Romani over here, and I've said, it feels like a bit of a holiday today because I haven't been as slammed Back to back to back to back, because uh, I kept moving you back to back to back. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've just chewed up most of the day. <laughs> so yeah, today is actually it's it's felt like a um, a lax day for me. <laughs> nice, and I'm off the back of COVID, so I may have to pause myself while I move off screen and die for a second. But I am I doing okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, no no dying on the podcast time. But what I wanted to talk about was a follow on from my solo session and some real practical type help around how to communicate with people and meet them where they're at. Now, last time I spoke a little bit about the energies. So we just we just briefly touched on this, the energies um, or DISC, if, you, if you're into DISC. And I also spoke about visual auditory and kinesthetic. And I thought it might be really, really good to, to go with the meet them where they're at. So... Jade, Jade sort of said to me like two minutes ago, I really don't know how to tackle this one. I don't know if I'm prepped for it. Like, do I know enough about this shit? So I'm, I'm going to start the conversation with Jade. I've got all this information I need to get to you. I'm, I've written this email that's like 15 pages long. I'll send it off to you. <laughs> and I'm gone. No. <laughs> and then you're going to ask me to type you something in response? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and I'm like, so, <laughs> of, of course, what I've just really poked at is that Jade and I, while we, we come across quite similar people, for me, when I want to absorb information, and if I need to absorb it, I actually have to read it. Whereas for Jade, if I need to communicate something with Jade, the worst thing in the world I can do is write a message that's 15 pages long. <laughs> Yeah, if you actually want me to comprehend that message, take any of it in. What what that means is it's really mean to Kay because then Kay has to read the email to me. Siri has to read it out to you. No, it's no, Kay that, reads it to me. It's not Siri, it's Kay. So yeah. this is a it's a really really yeah. interesting thing for um, for us to consider where you know when we're communicating with our teams and and there's there's two big parts to it and I and I touched on part of it on my own last time but you know the the how people a learn but also b communicate is super super important to make sure that they're actually understanding the message yeah beautiful and what we talk we talk a lot about when we're doing our leadership coaching around the thinking and action dynamics of the people that we're communicating with and how do we meet them where they're at on that level because even if a personality style is we see them as an extroverted person or an introverted person, that doesn't necessarily mean that's how they process information and how they need to be able to put together their thoughts to take the action. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's really, really important. I, I think if we go back to um, when we had the conversation with Charlotte, gosh, probably 12 months ago now. And Eat you know, more. More. Shh, shh. Time flies when you're having fun. So mm -hmm. the, the really key point that Charlotte made there was that the responsibility was on the person giving the message to make sure it is understood. So, and I, and I think that's a really important piece. So for me, I really, really need to read something. But if I actually need to get information to Jade, what I need to make sure that I do is that I explain it and I talk to it. And really the best thing I can do is send a voice message or a video or something like that. So if I need to communicate to Jade, that's it. Whereas for Jade, if Jade needs me to really, really understand something and pay attention, I actually need to see the text. And, so what and I do I'm, is I voice message Charlotte and Charlotte <laughs> writes it out. And then okay, she, or... she, somehow, she somehow articulates what's in my brain into ways that other people can receive it. <laughs> now, of course, there, there's also another. Now, 
I'm talking about three different styles of, of learning. There's actually a multitude. There's lots and lots and lots and lots of them, but it can be condensed down into basically three. And the third one is kinesthetic, or what I like to describe as a tactile learner. Now, Jade and I, we either like to read or we like to hear. The final one, and, and for most of my students, is the tactile learner, the kinesthetic learner. And these are the tradies. These are these are typically tradies and the, the example that I love to use is that I can I can hold this up and I can go, now that's blue and purple, uh, blue and orange. <laughs> I was like, wait, I, I what? I know my colours. <laughs> 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 this, is, this is blue and orange. Now, for me, I can look at it and I can see that if it had blue and orange written on it, it would gel like that. Now, I hold that up and I tell Jade that it's blue and purple. And Jade goes, yeah, of course. It's not fucking purple, you idiot. (laughs) (laughs) The third one that we've got is the kinesthetic learner. Now, the most important thing is, is that in either of those cases, they're looking at it and nodding. Mm -hmm. And their eyes are completely blank until you put it in their hands. Yeah. And when you put it in their hands and they touch it, oh, yeah, I can see that's blue. I can see that's purple or orange. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's funny because I was actually saying to this, uh, to remind me this morning about my learning style and that I'm listexic as fuck and that for me to integrate something, so I can conceptualise it like, you know, that I, I listen to audiobooks all of the time and sometimes I finish reading the book and I'm like, she was like, write a summary around that. I'm like, I don't write a summary around that. I don't, I don't even remember yeah. anything. <laughs> But then like three days later, I'm on a coaching call and bang, I'm on. Like it it just, it it comes because I need, it needs to have context for me. I think I'm an integrated learner in that, in that respect, in terms of I need to mirror it back or I need to put it into play. So I've got to do the thing. So it's a bit of the kinesthetic, but it's also that as soon as I can apply it to the to something in real time. I, I really struggle when it's just the theory or the con yep. or the concept that's not in real action. So when I go into a course, if there's no workshop part where you do it, if it's just repeat it back, I can I can do it, but it doesn't sink in. I forget it later. Yep. But the minute yep. I can yep. teach, and so this is the biggest thing for me, I need to teach it to integrate it. Yep. And the best way to cement learning is to be able to teach it. That's, you know, it's not actually the easiest thing in the world to do, but as soon as you can teach someone how to do it, often as you're teaching someone, you'll have an aha moment and go, hey, I actually get this now. (laughs) And like, I, I, I laugh at how many times I've been talking through a concept with a group of students where I go, hey, that just made a hell of a lot more sense to me. (laughs) (laughs) Me on the Stephen Kotler call this week. So I was listening to High Flow Communication, timely for this podcast, uh, at 1 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday night after I got back from twerk because uh, I had a 5 a.m. group call. And I'd started talking through the concept and then someone said something. I was like, oh, oh, shit, I've been yep. teaching that. For- <laughs> I'm like, oh, I actually teach that. I teach that stuff. But, I know that. <laughs> but when I was listening to the actual Death by PowerPoint slideshow, I didn't even connect the dots that it was something that I practiced until I started articulating it and sort of repeating it through and, and, and giving my language to it. And I think that this is one of the biggest things that I've seen with working with teams, especially because I'm constantly coaching or upskilling people. I now always straight afterwards, I'd say, what was your aha? What was your key takeaways? or slash learnings, depending on, because when you say it in those three, some it, it triggers differently for different people. Yep. But most importantly, what's the action or how would you teach somebody else to do this? Yeah, definitely. You, you did actually touch on an important part there where as an adult learner, typically adult learners need to integrate as they're learning and they need to actually apply it. So there's a- there's I'm a not an adult. I refuse to adult. <laughs> so when we talk about adult learners, we talk post-pubescent. So let, let's go with that then. <laughs> He's like, you are adult. <laughs> so, and, and when we, so when we talk about adult learners, the, the integration piece is very, very few people, like a very, very small percentage that can learn directly from, from theoretical type concepts. 
most adults actually have to apply it to cement that learning in. Mm. So that's that's kind of a piece of the learning. I thought I might come back a little bit and sort of talk a bit more about the communication because while it's all tied together, the learning bit um, flows on from the communication and and come back to that, the visual auditory and, and kinesthetic. So I gave a really good example. In, in the last one where I was all on my own, Jade, you missed out on all the good magic. I really <laughs> often as a, as a team leader, as a manager, as a business owner, you're left saying, for fuck's sake, why won't these people hear me? <laughs> why aren't they listening? No, no, what, not why can't they hear me. It's like, why aren't they listening? I've told them a thousand times. thousand I, times. <laughs> I sent them 15 emails. Why are they not getting it? <laughs> why don't they get it? <laughs> why don't they get it? What's wrong with them? Now, and, and look, it, it does happen. I put it in ClickUp. <laughs> it can be super frustrating <laughs> when you think that you've been super clear on it. Like I sent you a 15-page email. Like how much more... How much more can I put? What detail do you need? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, you know, like I've had 15 conversations with you. Why is this not, not gelling? Mm. So it's it's really important to understand our team and how they actually learn or communicate in that sort of style. Mm. So the the gold nugget that I had in the last one was a really quick way to pick up how people do this. Mm-hmm. And the, what I described was if you're working with a bunch of tradies because this is a really easy application, and you're going to give them a, a, a task sheet, a worksheet, you know, job card, whatever you want to call it. There's, you've got your three types of people. So the first one will grab it, and if you're me, you can be talking to me, telling me about the story, but I'm reading the page. I'm reading every word on the page. I'm picking. I can still hear you, and I'm still absorbing what you're saying, but I have to read what's on the page. If Jade gets the same work card, Jade's holding it like this, and intently, <laughs> Probably listening, yourself. <laughs> intently listening to every word that's coming through. <laughs> now, your final one is the tradie, the kinesthetic learner, grabs it and they're doing stuff like this. They're folding it, they're touching it, they're playing with it, they're tapping it, they're doing all these sorts of things. They're the guys that are kinesthetic. Asking it to give feedback. <laughs> and that's that's what they're, they're getting... Mm the tactile part. So they're listening. They might be learning. They might be reading a bit. They might be whatever. And it's it's really easy. So for, for someone that wants to read, the best thing you can do is leave them alone and let them read the, read the page. Yeah, and come back to you. Any questions? questions? No. I got no questions. Leave me alone. For someone that needs to hear it, best thing you can do is read read the story to them. <laughs> They'll still take it away. They still need the notes so that they've got the notes. But the best thing you can do is talk them through what the story is. Before that kinesthetic learner, you need to find a way to join the message with what's in the hands. So whether it's blue, whether it's parts for the job, you know, like here's the screwdriver that you need to use. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Might sound really, really silly, but a specialist that tool, integrate. a specialist piece of equipment, whatever it is, as long as it's in their hands and it's relevant to the task, they'll absorb this, the story. Let, let's switch that gear to say, well, because we, we, we use the Wealth Dynamics Talent Dynamics profiling system uh, in this a lot and people have heard it a fair bit, the, the four energy types. So we've got our steel-based energy, which uh, we can overlay this with DISC a little bit, I suppose. It's more on the compliance side, the detail-orientated so they're more they're more likely to want to see bullet points and details and facts figures broken down. The you've got our dynamos, which I think we've I, we most spoken about this in the last profile. Dynamos being the big picture thinkers, big picture vision. Oh look, there we go. Yes, fa- yes, fast thinkers. You you prepared. You cheated. Well, this is from um, last time. So oh, I did talk about this a little okay. bit last time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But you don't want to bog them down in the detail because they'll go to sleep on you. Yep. Uh, and you need to speak fast or, the, or you've lost them. You blaze people that need to be, have the humanised aspect of it to keep their interest. So that you need to peopleify and they're going to want to know who. So your steel base is going to want to know how. Your dynamo blaze is going to know what. What's the big picture? Your blaze people are going to know who. What's the people involved? And then your tempo people are going to want you to slow down, when? ground. When? And they want to know when. So they're like that pace. And so you can you can kind of overlay that 
with your different systems as well. Now, if you want, if you went to the next level, you'd go, okay, are they a, are they a, a who that is auditory versus, yeah, that's yeah. the next and, ninja. And that, that's where the, yeah. the interesting part comes from. If you look at where you and I both sit, we both sit up in that, that fast people kind of corner. Yet we both yeah. absorb information very, very differently. So, mm. and look, I, I just wanted, I thought that we should try and stay really, really focused on how to communicate effectively. And and I think you, you started to touch on it there really, really well. Was if someone needs information, give them information. If someone doesn't need information, don't. <laughs> yeah. What I was saying, I, oh, I think I said on this morning's call, the stuff that was coming from my high flow communications uh, in terms of don't say what you want to say, say what they need to hear and think about the outcome. So this is about, this is where that real awareness piece comes in because we can react and we talk how we want to hear things, right? Because that's natural to us. (laughs) And it takes a lot more effort to stop and think about, oh shit, this is not about me. (laughs) Sorry, Ego, you're going over there in the little box. Uh, uh, It's not about you. It's about them. And it causes you far less frustration and it's far quicker in the long run, even if it takes you five minutes to set up in the front. So what do they say? Uh, The 10 minutes in planning saves you how many minutes in the game? It's it's an hour, 10 hours effectively in, in real life. But really stopping and going, oh, fuck. Okay, the people that I'm speaking to, what is their style? Yep. How do they? How do I speak so they can hear me? What's the real outcome I want to have? Does it does it serve me to fly off the handle or get heated? Like, is that actually going to get the result that I want? If I'm a calm person, but I want to hype up a blaze or a a dynamo, how do I raise myself up into that energy so that I can get them up with me? You're laughing at me. <laughs> uh, I, I was yeah. just trying to think of a lord type person trying to really. Rev up a blaze person, because <laughs> I know I know for myself how hard it can be to really have to get to the detail part, like really really hard. And you know, I, and and look, I know a lot of people have the same problem. And what about me bringing my energy down to be a grounded <laughs> well, accumulator. So it it comes out as I can work this out. Why can't everyone else? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I, I, I can work this out. Just, just go and read the book. Go and find the information. Like, yeah, just go and do it. Just, just make it happen. But for some of our our staff and for some of our team members, that doesn't work. Um, and and this doesn't mean that they're lazy. This doesn't mean that they're sufferers, survivors, or anything like that. What it means is they operate different to me. Yeah, <laughs> and we need people that operate different to us because otherwise the shit don't get done. <laughs> mean <laughs> like the the businesses and and teams so if we really looked at, a, at creating a, a great team right we want to make sure that we've got a balance of the different types because otherwise you never like you can't have that like you don't know light without dark and you need the polarity and you need the different thinking to stress test things and to fill the gaps because it's extremely hard to find a unicorn that can that can play devil's advocate for both sides right you know, sometimes you get a schizophrenic bipolar person, but, you know, any given day you, you may not get what you need. <laughs> it's like, no, we don't need that one today. We need the other one today. Can we do it late? But do you know what I mean? Like you, if you really want to build high-performance teams, even if they're not, say you need a certain profile to do the task, when you're going into problem solving or growth mode or uh, fixing something that's massively fucked up, you want to be able to bring into that team those different dynamics so that you've got the other side because you're completely like the brains just operate differently. So it's really important that we don't fall, especially as a leader to our unconscious bias of we like yeah. people like us because we get them and they get us and no, like, why don't they get it? It's so frustrating. <laughs> right. <laughs> why are they always bringing me down, man? And so I, I know something that I struggled with probably for the first, I don't know, five or six years that I was running a business was beating myself up because for me, I am the big picture person and to actually knuckle, knuckle down and and really do the details out breaks me. It breaks my soul. I'll, I'll do almost anything to get out of it. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll even, even get, jump on. You'll even get COVID. <laughs> I'll, well, I'll even jump on and I'll, I'll run a podcast so that I don't have to do it. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, like I, I know that uh, I beat I'll myself. Go up. drive an excavator and move mud. No. <laughs> And I, I certainly, I know I beat myself up a fair bit about it until I worked out that we actually need different people in our teams. We need different p- parts to the team because my job with that big picture is to be able to join all the dots and mm-hmm. and not necessarily pull in the detail, but go, well, that bit of detail goes with that bit of detail and they come together yeah. and join those dots. That's my genius. That's that where I see it. as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas what I need is I need people to be able to do the detail bit when I go, okay, those two pieces can go together. Join them. Yeah. <laughs> you put them together, bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but Where my, my real skill set is around the people. Who is those people that sit yep. behind that? Like who do we need to ask? Where do I go for, like, I can go, okay, who? I can, like yesterday we were trying to problem solve um, running in store, into store competitions in a retail format. And it's not really fair that they are just always on sales because we've got some stores with much higher foot traffic, bigger footprints, et cetera. And that's demotivating for the other stores. I'm like, okay, this is not something I've done myself. Like I have to make 12 months worth. I'm like, I can get three months out ideas out. I'm like, Fuck. I'm like, okay, cool. Who do I know? Ah, I did a podcast with John Blake who specifically like he grew Arnett's and like he's he's used to doing retail training, retail sales training, having multiple stores, working with franchises. I'll just hit him up. And he came back with like five different ways for me to do it in like he, he got me back in like three minutes. I then passed that on to the people and culture person and she set. Done. Off and going. And, and but, it's joining those but that, but that person's profile was, oh, shit, I have to figure out how to do this myself and I'm fit like some it was only by me going where are you stuck where are you stuck where are you stuck yep. I'm out of ideas okay cool let me ask somebody how, how can I come up with some ideas yep 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 and and to flesh out the the fine details of how all that's going to come together and all that sort of stuff you know by sheer grit and determination you can do it but it breaks you mm. It just it just depletes your batteries. Yes. Completely. Yes. And it doesn't yeah. put you in highest best use. No. So no. in terms of in terms of a leader or a team manager, team leader with their team, what would you suggest that they they do? If they've got a, a project or even they want to get the best out of their team next week, they're going to run a huddle or a toolbox. What's the what's the things that you get them to think about in preparation? So I, I do like your template that you that you sell. To send out to everyone the meeting maximizer. So I, I would certainly recommend having a look at that. So the first step would be pay attention. You know, I just gave some really quick tips on how you can identify how people are receiving your message. So just pay attention to it and notice how people are, are receiving that message because then you can tailor it. Now, obviously, in a big team, you know, and when I say a big team, that might only be six, you might have two of each. You know, you're going to have a cross-section of everyone. So what you probably then need to do is make sure that everyone understands that you need to deliver the message to everyone. Mm. So firstly, pay attention, but then actually make sure that you let everyone know that I'm telling you and I'm giving it to you because you all receive this message differently. Yeah. Um, And and once you bring that to their awareness too, they step up to the plate. So when you do communicate that to them and you allow them the permission to be aware, they can start to recognize and go, oh, I'm not going to just tune out because it's not my style. And they start to look at things a different way as well. So the integration, because it's not that people can't do it. It's just the natural default. So if you can help them have the awareness, you get a higher uh, engagement as well. And I would say the final piece is, is communicate the way that you want people to talk to you. Now, when I say talk to you, communicate with you. So as, as the team leader, if if you need your team to come out with notes so that you can absorb it later, make sure that they understand why that's important, that, you know, 
yes, I heard you listening. You know, I was listening and and I heard all of your words, but my brain doesn't work that way. So I need I need you to make sure that you've got those key points down for me. It's not because I want you to write an essay every day. It's because otherwise I just can't absorb your information. Now I'm going to work really really hard to try and absorb as much of it. But help me out and give me the key points on your on your timesheet, on your worksheet, whatever it is, so that I can actually receive the information. And most importantly, do something useful with it to help you out. Yeah, beautiful. This is why, when, like I said before, when I get people to circle back their ahas, key takeaways, I say to them, you can either drop me an email with it or a, well, me an email, Slack. They can Slack me <laughs> or they can send me an audio, whichever works best for them. But it's so that they've had a chance to, to recalibrate and reiterate so that they can feed it back and that's the level of integration. But I give them the two choices of which way they want to do it so that can be the natural way for them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's our three points. I hope that helps everyone. Jade's team will leave a link to the meeting maximizer wherever you're listening to this so that you can grab that. That's a really good way to make sure that you're getting your message across to your teams. And as always, everyone, leave us a message. Let us know how, how you communicate with your team, what's the best way for you and um, what you got out of today's session. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, everyone.